Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session only, we observed that the simple binary codes are not capable enough in facilitating the error detection or error correction abilities. So in this session, we are going to learn about a code which actually is capable and that is Hamming code. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will acquire the understanding of how Hamming code helps in single bit error correction. In computer organizations, single bit errors are the most frequently occurring errors. And in order to correct those, we need one bit error correction codes. Say two different computers are in communication and the sender wants to transmit a message of M bits. And in order to handle those M bits, P parity bits are appended with that particular message. So its entirety, P plus M bits are transmitted. Now once this data is transmitted at the receiver side, if we talk about from a broader perspective, there can be two different scenarios. One, none of the bits are corrupted. That means this entire piece of data, it got received as it was. Now since we are talking about single bit errors, the second type of scenario can be, any one of the P plus M bits can be corrupted. So basically, from this P plus M bits of data, any one of the bits can be corrupted. Now the question is, how this P parity bits are going to handle this entire piece of data? Now think about it, with P bits, we can derive 2 raised to the power P number of patterns. Now these many patterns should be capable enough of handling all these cases. That is, 2 raised to the power p should be bigger than p plus m. That is, it must include enough number of patterns where each of them can specify p plus m number of bits individually. And along with this, it should include another pattern which can handle this particular case. That is, none of the bits are corrupted. So to be exact, 2 raised to the power p should be greater than equals to p plus m plus 1. This one signifies this particular case. Now just to get a hang of it, let's solve this question. Say if the data size is 4 bits, how many parity bits are needed? So according to this question, m is 4. Now this is the inequation that we are going to use. And here m's value is 4. So the inequation actually becomes 2 raised to the power p is greater than equals to p plus 5. Now let's look for the values of p. If we set p as 1, 2 raised to the power 1 will result in 2 and 1 plus 5 is 6. So the inequation is failing. Then again, if we set p as 2, observe, 2 squared will give us 4 and 2 plus 5 will give us 7. Again, the inequation is failing. Now let's see if we set the value of p as 3. Now 2 cubed is 8 and 3 plus 5 is also 8. So yes, 3 is the value for p. So, if m is 4, that if the data size is 4 bits, then 3 parity bits are needed. Now the question is, how these parity bits are going to handle this m plus p, that is this entire 7 bits of data? Let me illustrate. Say we have a message of 4 bits, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now let's name the bit places like this. This is m1, this is m2, this is m3 and this is m4. Now we just have observed for a 4-bit message, we will be needing 3 parity bits, right? And since we have named the message bits like m1, m2, m3 and m4, let's name the parity bits as p1, p2 and p3. So altogether, the transmitted data will have 3 plus 4, that is 7 bits. Now the organization of these 7 bits are something like this. Now you might be wondering why these bits are organized like this. And the answer to that lies at the receiver side. Say the receiver has three different bits, C1, C2 and C3, which are supposed to handle all these cases. Now we already know with three bit places, we can have eight different patterns. That is starting from 000 till 111, correct? Now all these eight patterns will signify different cases. Like 000 will signify that all the bits are okay, that is, this particular case, none of the bits are corrupted. 
Thereafter, 0, 0, 001 will specify that the first bit, that is P1, is corrupted. Subsequently, 0, 010 0 will specify the second bit, that is P2, is corrupted. Similarly, 0, 011 1 will specify the third bit, that is M1, is corrupted. Thereafter, 100 0, 0 will specify the fourth bit, that is P3, is corrupted. Then again, the sequence 101 will specify the fifth bit, that is M2, is corrupted. Thereafter, the sequence 110 will specify the sixth bit, that is M3 got corrupted. And finally, the sequence 111 will specify that the seventh bit, that is M4, got corrupted. Now, the assignment of the parity bits are done as follows. Basically, P1 signifies C3, then P2 signifies C2, and finally, P3 signifies C1. Now, let's observe the columns of C3, C1 and C2 carefully. Observe, in case of C3, these bit places have 1. So, basically, C3 is responsible for the bit places 1, 3, 5 and 7. In other words, C3 will judge whether any of these bits are corrupted or not. Now, observe the column of C2. Here, these bit places are 1s. So, basically, C2 will judge whether the 2nd, 3rd, 6th and 7th bits are corrupted or not. So, C2 is responsible for these bit places. Now, coming to C1, observe, these are 1s, right? So, C1 will judge whether the 4th, 5th, 6th or 7th bits, that is, any of these bits are corrupted or not. So, this is how at the receiver's side, this entire message, will be checked for 1-bit errors. Now, let me justify the bit positions of the parity bits. Observe, P1 corresponds to C3, right? And C3 is responsible for the bit places 1, 3, 5 and 7. And among all these bit places, 1 is the first place. So, this is the reason why P1 is placed at first. Thereafter, P2 corresponds to C2. And C2 is responsible for the 2nd, 3rd, 6th and 7th bit. Observe, among all these, 2 is the first one. So, this is the reason why P2 is placed at the 2nd place. Now, finally, P3 corresponds to C1, which is again responsible for the bits 4, 5, 6 and 7. And among all these, 4 is the first one. And that's the reason why P3 is placed in the 4th place. So, basically, the parity bits will be placed in the first places of all the bits which are being judged by C3, C2 and C1. Let's now get back to our illustration. So, our message is 0110. So, let's place this message bits first. Now, the parity bits will be derived from these sequences which we have just obtained. Now, if you remember, in the previous session itself, we learnt about even and odd parity, didn't we? And by default, even parity is used. So, P1 will be obtained by judging the bit places 3, 5 and 7. Observe, it is 0, 1, 0. Since we are using even parity, therefore, the value of P1 will be 1. Because according to the logic of even parity, if the number of 1s in the code is odd, then we will set the parity to 1. Now, coming to P2, its bit place is 2 and we will produce the even parity for this, judging the bit places 3, 6 and 7. Observe, it's 0, 1, 0. So, the value for P2 will be 1 since we are using even parity logic. Now, coming to P3, its bit place is 4 and the even parity for this one will be obtained by judging the bit places 5th, 6th and 7th. Observe, 1, 1, 0. So, our code already consists two ones, that is even number of ones. So, for P3, the parity bit will be 0. So, finally, this is the message which is going to be transmitted. Now, say the sender is transmitting this message. However, the receiver receives this message. Observe, these two are different and thus, this is an invalid one. Because, this particular bit got toggled during transmission. So, let's see how Hamming code is going to resolve this. This is the bit sequence which the sender sent and this is the bit sequence which got delivered at the receiver side. 
Now at the receiver side, we know C1, C2 and C3 are supposed to handle the error correction. Now C1, C2 and C3 basically will implement the same even parity logic. So C1 can be obtained by judging the bit places 4, 5, 6 and 7. Observe, we are having 1, 1, 1, 0. So basically we are having odd number of 1's in our code. Therefore, C1 will yield the even parity as 1. Now coming to C2, the yield of C2 can be obtained by judging the bit places 2nd, 3rd, 6th and 7th. Observe, 1, 0, 1, 0. So we are having even number of 1's in our code. Therefore, C2 will yield the even parity as 0. Now finally, in case of C3, the yield can be obtained by judging the bit places 1, 3, 5 and 7. Notice 1, 0, 1, 0. So we again are having even number of 1's. Therefore, the even parity yield of C3 will be 0. Now if you remember, at the receiver side, C1, C2 and C3 help us determine which of the bits got corrupted. Observe the pattern that we obtained from C1, C2 and C3, it is 100. Now the pattern 100 means the fourth bit got corrupted. Therefore, the receiver will notice that this bit is the corrupted one and hence can correct it. Now the question is, how this C1, C2 and C3 actually helped us get this answer? Now observe. C1 is responsible for these bit places 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th. Since the yield of C1 is 1, it means C1 is stating that any one of these bits are corrupted. Now if we notice the yield of C2 and C3, these are zeros. That means none of these bits and none of these bits are corrupted. So if we perform intersection between C1 and C2, Try to understand this logic. C1 is saying any of these bits are corrupted, whereas C2 is claiming none of these bits are corrupted. Therefore, the bit positions 6 and 7 are not corrupted at all. So clearly, either the 4th or the 5th bit is corrupted. Now, according to C3, the bit position 5th is not corrupted at all because C3 stated 0 and therefore we are only left with the bit place 4. So this is how the sequence C1, C2 and C3 help us figure out the erroneous bit. So this way using Hamming code, we actually can perform single bit error correction. And if you remember, in case of error correction, the knowledge of the error is not enough. We should also be able to pinpoint and correct the erroneous bit. So, in this session, we acquired the understanding of how Hamming code helps us in single bit error correction. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will solve some interesting numerical problems. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.